Geography at Namgongo Secondary and Vocational School. And today we are going to talk about mining in Uganda. This is Geography P250 Stroke 3, Geography of Current Geography of Uganda and Fieldwork. So by the end of this lesson, a student should be able to define mining, give the current status of mining, identify the different minerals that are mined in Uganda and where they are mined, the areas where they are mined, Draw a sketch map to, to represent the minerals and the areas. Then we shall explain some of the factors that have favored mining in Uganda today. So, as we've said that mining, we define that mining is the extraction of minerals from the earth's surface. We use extraction, we don't repeat mining because some people say mining is the mining. No, we extract whatever we get from down, we extract minerals. Then, in Geography 3, you always have to show the examiner that you currently know what is taking place in the mining sector. That is why we call it the current status. Mining, the mining in Uganda, current status, you have to tell us what mining is today. Or if someone gives you the term mining, what can you talk about mining today, current status? One, it contributes to Uganda's, to Uganda's GDP, that is 0 0.5. Minerals are exported in raw form in most cases that after being extracted, they are exported the way they are before some of them are even processed. Then mining today is owned by foreign companies. You'll find that most of the minerals that are being mined, we use foreign companies to help us mine those minerals. We are not saying all, but we are saying most of the mining that is carried out today is done by foreign companies. Then we have vermiculite and gold are the most leading minerals exported by value. We do not say exported or mined by value, but those that are exported, they are mined but exported by value. Not most mined. There is a difference between most mined and those that are mined most exported by value this coward here so they're telling us it is vermiculite and gold though others are also exported but their value is not high like the two then new minerals have been discovered of recent like we have oil and of recent I was touching about uh, glypsin that is in Cotido, though it has not yet been brought out, the one that helps us in making pencils. Then oil extraction is still in infancy stage because we have not yet mined as a country to a level like other countries, so it is still growing. Most mining is done today using rudimentary tools. For example, when people go for clay, they use holes, uh, others use sticks, the same with sand. Then sand and clay are the most mined. That when you go, we have clay and sand. Here we have gold and vermiculite. That everywhere you go, when you go to Gulu, you'll find them mining clay. When you go to Kampala, you'll find them mining clay. When you go to Kitukum, you'll find them mining the sand. The whole region, or the whole of Uganda at least, these are the most mined per day. A man, yearly, annually, most mind. We're talking about the current status. Currently, briefly, what we know about mining. After showing the examiner that this is what I know about mining, you have to show the examiner the different minerals that are mined in Uganda today. And this one, it is a student who will choose how to write. I may choose to begin with the district and say, Kasese, we have Hopa, Cobalt, limestone. Then I may choose to say Tororo. Tororo, we have clay, they mine sand, and they also have limestone. This is one method of showing the different minerals. Or a student may choose to start with the mineral, and you say we have limestone. And then you give us the area. 
that you will find limestone in Kasese and in Tororo. We have gold. We have gold in Busia. Are we getting it? So there are two methods. As at the end of the day, you have to tell us the minerals. And we, as we've displayed, we have gold in Busia, Mshenyi, Mwende. We have uh, iron ore in Muko. We have tin in Ntungamu, limestone, Tororo, clay, clay at Kajansi, clay in Kampala, clay in Igulu. Clay is everywhere. We have sand. As long as we have a lake and some uh, soft rocks, we have sand. Then we have gypsum. Then we have wolfram oil, salt from Katwe, ETC. After you showing the examiner the different minerals that have been mined, this geography is a science. You have to show us that now I am drawing the sketch map to show you the minerals that I have listed in above. Don't mind about my figure here on the blackboard, you know, but it is called a sketch map. So this is just a sketch. And on our sketch, we have Lake Victoria. Then we shall have Gorge and Edward. Then we shall have our Albert, Albert Nile. Then we shall have our Choga. So some people like drawing Choga when it is falling down, forgetting that it is the, Al the Victoria Nile that comes to Choga here. Then we have our Aswa. So when we are drawing and illustrating, after having our sketch map qualities, you frame your map. After having the frame, then we shall have a key. And here we have a title. So we come and tell, you tell the examiner that here I have Arua and I have Nebi. Then I'll have Lira and Gulu. Then I'll have Kabong. Kotido, then here I'll put Soroti, I'll put Tororo, Kampala, Kabale, Kasese. I'll begin with those ones so far. Here you can also come and tell us Hoima. So, as after giving us, because we are looking at the sketch map, you have to show the examiner that at least I know some of these areas. You're going to put the minerals, but of recent we prefer that if you at least put that in the, I'm looking at the Mika, that this is my navy here, I'll put a box because the minerals are many. I, this yet navy has a dot. So I'll come and say this is navy this box is representing Nebi. Then I'll put my Mika and I'll say there is also sand. Then I'll come here and say MI is for Mika. Then S is for sand. The reason why our map is having circles is because you may find an area like Kasese here. We have limestone, we have copper, we have cobalt. We have sand. Now, the, long, the more these minerals are continuing, there are districts around Kasese. We have Bunibijo, we have Kabarole. So, these minerals are now crossing the boundary that you've told us Kasese is here. That's why we put this circle to show that we are representing all these minerals in Kasese. I hope you're getting me why we are having the circles. That now, I may choose to see even the result in Kasese. Then I'll come here and put the symbols. I'm trying to explain why we, you may either use a circle or someone may use a square, a rectangle, a triangle, as long as you're trying to border your minerals. Then here I will use a triangle and say this is Kampala. We have sand and clay. As you're seeing there on our map, and the examiner has to look for the minerals within the map. Does your map have a key? Does it have the boundary? Does it have the title? So this is how we introduce questions in paper. Read. 
This is how we introduce questions in paper three. So we are going to look at a sample question and see how that question can be attacked. How can we attack a question about mining? Our question is explain explain the factors that have favored the development the development of the mining sector in Uganda. How would you attack such a question? One, first read the question and look for the concepts of what the question wants. The question is asking for factors. So if I am to bring a factor, I should show that this factor has favored the development. And then we have the word Uganda. Meaning, I am going to bring a factor, show how it has led to development, and give an example of a town in Uganda. The first thing that a student or a candidate should look at is, is this a topical question? That when the teacher comes to class, the teacher says, today we are going to study about mining. If it is a topical question, we do not define the question. Sorry, the, 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 the concept of mining. Here, we give the current status. Since it is a topical question, current status is needed. If it is a subtopic, then we define because it is under the topic. So today our question is looking at a topic which is mining, therefore we give the current status. The one we've given in our introduction, we have oil as a new mineral, then most companies are owned by foreigners, then we say that they use rudimentary tools, ETC. At least, at least give six. Then, after giving the current status to the examiner, show the examiner that you're asking about mining, these are the minerals. Identify the different minerals and then give you and the towns where these minerals are mined. After that, show the examiner that this is the sketch map. We are in Uganda and this is the sketch map showing the minerals that are mined. After, now go to our question because this will act as the introduction part and you're showing the examiner that you're well equipped with the question. So since we've seen how it is attacked, we are going to look at the factors that have favored mining in Uganda today. You know, it is called the current geography. You look for a mining site, go to a mining area and ask if, uh, if people are mining sand in my village, what factors have favored the mining of this sand? One, they are telling us that the presence of the valuable minerals. I am going to use an example of gold in carbon because we said in our current status it is most exported by value. So the presence of this gold in Uganda has led to the development of mining because the mineral is there and this mineral has a value. Then the second, they are telling us the appearance of the landscape is gently gentle slope. That it is easier to mine on a gentle slope than a lowland and a steep slope and a hill. So since the area is gently sloping, it is easy for the tractors and the machines to help in the mining process. Let us remember that every point that you put forward, she should tell us it is available, it is present, yes. But we should know that you have to illustrate when we go back to our question, we said they said in Uganda, e.g. gold in carbon. E.g. clay in kajansi. Each point that you set down as a geographical student or candidate should have an illustration. 
illustration and this illustration should have the mineral because the question is about mining and Uganda the area that is in Uganda where it is in mined please take note of that a point without an example is open but if you're talking about factors in, in Kenya in Tanganyika but when you attach the example from Uganda you bring back our geography paper three the ideal climate that mining is basically done during the dry season so this has encouraged the 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 the, 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 the what the mining of here yeah, we are looking at the climate and you say we are looking at dry because someone cannot go to Lake Katwe and mine when it is raining but when it is dry the water levels also reduce a bit so it is easier for this person to go and mine you cannot mine the sun when it is raining because whatever you mine is going to be washed off by the running water so the presence of the ideal climate in areas like Kabong where we have the semi arid climate has favored the mining of gold because of its dryness then we have the presence of the hard base menti rocks e.g. gold in carbon so hard basement rocks that this helps in the open pit or open cast method that when the rocks are broken on both sides they go in these pits and mine because they know that they cannot fall on them. So the presence of these hard basement rocks here that are firm favor mining to the miners because they know that the pits cannot collapse any time. E.g. limestone in Kasese. Next, we are looking at the availability of adequate capital. The capital that is used to pay the miners, the capital that is used to, pay, to buy the machines, the capital that is used to pay the taxes, the capital in simple terms, large sums of money that is used to purchase, pay the labor, construct the mining sectors. So when this money is there, it has favored mining because it is easy for mining to be carried out when the workers are paid and satisfied and you also have the money to buy the machines then the next point is availability of the large market today all of us sleep in houses where i'm even recording from it is a room which means they had to use the sand meaning the market is there for these minerals so the availability of the market has favored mining because by the time the mining is done you already know that at the end of the day a customer is coming for my son a customer is coming for the limestone because construction is done on a daily basis in all the districts of uganda then we also have the supportive government policy the point is starting with the word supportive supportive government policy that when the government supports one it reduces on the taxes it gives the tax holidays to the people who are carrying out mining it is promoting privatization that it is not only the government that has to carry out mining but it has to be carried out by other people we have relative political stability where we do not have wars intensive research that is carried out so that's to find out that yeah there is oil in me on lake albert how can we mine it availability of skilled labor people who carry out the research those who go and work in the mining sector availability of improved technology because we said most of it is done by rudimentary tools but we have machines today that help in the drilling of oil and gold then we have availability of improved transport network that helps the miners to transport the good the minerals from the mining centers to the market where they are consumed then presence of power and energy that is used in the smooth running of the machines as they are drilling the oil as they are uh, mining the copper as they are mining the limestone these machines need power for example a solar a biomass biogas depending on what mineral is being mined availability of many mineral deposits that's why our sketch map has been showing different areas that a 
mind. And that is how our lesson ends today when we look as we have looked at the factors that have favored mining. Before I log out, my dear candidate who is watching me out there, you should put in mind that geography three, you bring out the point, and this point should have an example. And our example is always the topic and the area, or some people call it the district, or you can call it the town where that topic is being carried out. Thank you for watching. I hope it is a positive lesson towards your candidate. Namgongo Second Run Vocational School is where I teach. Name is Nanyonga Mary. Subscribe to nsbs.com.